All right, FAQ number 53, what is uniform translation? Okay, this is another one of the funny little attacks that the new versionists will often do. They will say that the King James Bible is not uniform in its translation, that they don't translate certain words correctly, that they do it correctly in this area, and they don't do it correctly over here. Um, again, this is very foolish. Okay, uh, translation of words is dependent upon the context. So you might have a Greek word that you know, it can be translated multiple ways, but the way you determine how to translate it is by the context in which it appears. Okay, um, I'll give you an example. In German, the word bitte can mean please or you're welcome. Well, if you see the word bitte, you say, uh, now what, how do you translate that in, into English? Well, it depends on the context. Are you, are you saying, can I do something please, or are you saying, you're welcome? See, there are many words that are like that. And so this, again, you know, people try to say that translation is this exact science and you can just go from here to here and, and there's no contextual meanings or whatever else. The translation issue is very, very detailed, very complicated. Um, but I'm going to show you one of the most famous ones where they, these new versionists, they'll go here all the time. Uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, the new versionists just throw up their hands and they go into fits and they say, the King James Bible falsely translated it. The word is pascha, P-A-S-C-H-A. -S -S pascha, that's the Greek word and it always means Passover. Uh, okay, well, there's a whole lot of problems with this one. Uh, first of all, a fun little question to ask these Alexandrian perverts is to say, okay, well, um, how do you say Easter in Greek? You know what the Greek word for Easter is? Pascha. And there are many Greek Orthodox uh, churches that their Easter celebration, they'll call it their Pascha celebration. They actually use the word Pascha for Easter. Um, so, you know, the Greek word there could be translated, you know, Pascha could be translated as Passover, and it could also be translated as Easter. Now, I'm not going to go into a big explanation here, because uh, Dr. Sam Gipp, his book, uh, The uh, Answers to Your Bible Version Questions, I talked, to, uh, I think I talked about that in one of my other videos, and he goes into the thing of why Easter is the correct translation. You know, you look up at verse 3, it says, Then were the days of unleavened bread, you know? Those come actually after the Passover. So the days of unleavened bread are there, but uh, Herod's going to bring Peter out after Passover. Well, how's that work? Passover already happened, you know, and Herod is not a Jew. He's a pagan. Why would he bother celebrating the Passover? No, he's actually celebrating Easter, which is a pagan holiday, by the way. And so the correct word there is Easter. But again, this thing of, this is another one of the famous attacks. They'll say, you know, that, uh, and they'll come up with all these things. I'm not going to go over a bunch of them, but they'll come up with this thing and insist that the King James Bible should translate the same word the same way every single time. And when it doesn't, it's not being consistent. Uh, again, you know, we got all these people that are studying Greek texts and they have all these inter interlinears and lexicons and all this stuff. And, you know, a lot of that stuff is not even written by Christians, you know. Thayer's lexicon, Thayer was a Unitarian, wasn't even saved, you know. But yet, saved professing Christians, you know, professing Christians, I should say. They'll use a Unitarian's book to try and overthrow the King James Bible. Talk about consistency. You know, they'll, they'll look at some of the, the textual theories of, of Westcott and Hort. And these guys were, you know having seances and calling up devils and things like this. And these guys, you know, are, are good, you know, solid Bible-believing Christians that we can believe them to overthrow the King James Bible and the Texas Receptus. You know, it's really some messed up stuff. So, you know, as a Christian, you got to get a couple things settled, okay? you got to get it settled that Jesus Christ died for your sins, okay? When you get saved, it's finished. You don't have to go to Mass or you don't have to do penance or do good deeds or something like that to 
stay saved and stay in God's good graces so he doesn't take your salvation away. No, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, according to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. You're saved. You're sealed. All right? The second thing you've got to get figured out is that God wrote a book. And you better figure out what it is. And if you study the, you know, put in the time to do the study, you're going to see it's the King James Bible. And if you're a King James Bible believer, then you can say, I believe this book right here. I believe this is God's book. But if you go with the Alexandrian side and you become an Alexandrian pervert, you can't hold up any book. You hold up multiple books and say, this is the word of God. You know, well, there's more than one. Do they say the same things? Well, no, they don't say the same things, but they're all God's word. Well, then the God that these people, these Alexandrian perverts, their God is a God that can't get the Bible right. It has to continually revise it and revise it and revise it and revise it. A long time ago, I studied this Bible version issue. I have a whole lot of books on the issue right here. A whole lot of them. Most of them that are in print. I have other ones up top there that are from the Alexandrian perverts. I have uh, James White's book, both the old one and then the newer, his revised one, his new version, you know. But uh, I have those. I've read them. I mean, I've read a lot of the books from the enemy, you know, these Alexandrian perverts. I've read Bible-believing books. I've read Texas Receptus. People that believe the Texas Receptus is God's perfect word, not the King James. I've read all the different sides. And, you know, I got to a point where I'm just like, you know what? I could keep reading this thing and I could go and I could learn Hebrew and Greek and I could try to study all this stuff. And, and you know, or I can just have faith in what God gave me. And I can start to read and believe this King James Bible and preach this King James Bible and see if it works out. And it's never let me down. That's the issue. Why don't you try it out? Why don't you try out this King James Bible and see how it applies? You know, I mean, I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, back when I was a wood turner, uh, there would be these special tools and it'll save you, you know, your time when you're turning and things. And they, this is a special thing and it'll, it's much better than the traditional tools and all this other stuff. And I fell for some of that stuff early on, you know, when I was a professional wood turner and, and I'd buy this tool and I'd try it out for a while. And I sincerely wanted the thing to work. But it wouldn't work. And I, le I learned pretty soon that uh, just using the old tools that have been proven for a long time, they get the results. Well, they might not be as glitter glittery and fashionable as the new stuff, the new and improved, but uh, they get results. They work. They work every time. They've been working for thousands of years. you know. And this King James Bible has been working for over 400 years. There's never been one book on this planet that's ever been tested and tried like this King James Bible. Tested by scholars, tested by missionaries. I mean, you want to talk about testing and trying this book? Go back into the 1800s. Study some of the people back in the 1800s. Again, a lot of these books up in, uh, up in here, some of these books and things, these guys that used the King James Bible, and they went out and they preached it. They weren't standing up there and saying, let me tell you today, the Word of God says something other than this book here because this book is actually kind of poorly translated in some areas. Is that the realm of Christians? No, that's the realm of scribes. You ought to see what Jesus thought of those. You know, Jesus spake as, as one having authority and not as the scribes the Bible talks about. So get this thing settled in your mind. The King James Bible is God's word for the English-speaking people. And if you have another language translation out there that matches a lot of the Receptus type readings, a lot of the the correct readings that are in the King James Bible, then praise the Lord. Use that one for your language. So don't fall for this thing of natural or this uh, thing of uniform translation.